Yeah. So at this point, let me turn it over to Eric, and he can spend some more time talking about the business uh, around and what his experiences have been uh, throughout this. And I think we're at this point we're going to transition to his screen. Uh, Riley, if you could give me a hand with that, that would be awesome. Thank you. And I will stop talking and let Eric continue. Uh, can you folks uh, see uh, the CN heat overlay yes. I have here? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to give a very brief kind of overview of of what I'll do to typically um, vet a, a new site that we want to deploy uh, deploy some product on. And what we'll do is we'll go to CN Heat, we'll put in the uh, GPS coordinates of like the tower that we want to place, where we want to place it, along with the frequency we want to use. And as you can see here, we have a little tower up at the top. And you can see that based upon a 20 foot average, uh, like install height, um, of like basically where we would mount a radio, you know, 20, 20 feet in the air on top of someone's, the eve of someone's house. You can see that the coverage, the line of sight coverage is not great off this tower. Um, and you can see the target signal strength that we're looking at is negative 70. Um, so we're, this, this doesn't look very great, but when we change to non-line of sight, you'll see it, it dramatically changes in terms of the predictive, um, the predictive received signal strength. Um, and just to let you know, uh, this, this is using uh, LIDAR data from back in 2014, I believe. So it's not even really new LIDAR data. But I think it's still relevant. We're going to do a little uh, quiz here here in a moment. But uh, we're going to zoom in, and we're going to go to actually my house, which is where I'm presenting from right now. And we're going to put a little pin here, and it's going to show us that um, at 15 feet above the ground. Uh, it's predicting a negative 78 received signal, 21 feet above the ground, negative 72. But we can go back here, we can flip it back to line of sight. You can see that my house is not, there's no line of sight to my house based upon CN heat. But when I click over to non line of sight, it shows me the height that I need to achieve uh, above ground level to get a specific receive signal. And if you see here, the sweet spot is kind of negative 60. It's showing I need to be 24, a minimum of 24 feet above ground level in order to get a negative 60. Now we're gonna do a little quiz here. I mentioned that the LIDAR data is back from 2014. How many of you think that over time, you know, trees grow and whatnot, what do you think that my receive signal, my RSSI is today um, based on this data? If you could quickly just put in the chat window, what do you think it is? Do you think it's going to be a negative 70? Do you think it's going to be negative 80? Um, I'm actually going to show you what the RSSI is of the radio that I'm actually broadcasting right now across with. So and do we have any guesses? Right. Matt, Main Riotis is going to give everyone a free tower of three gig four. <laughs> no, <laughs> kidding. All kidding aside. <laughs> so do we have our bets? What's the consensus? Are we going to see negative 70 or negative 50? What do you think? OK. We'll move forward with this and I'll show you. So this is the line of sight at this location I just showed you on CN Heat. That little red circle is all the trees that I'm going through. So we're going through a mess of trees. This is a quick little video that shows you 
what the uh, line of sight is and above the tree line. So we can see there's a 450 B high gain radio. We can see that those trees that are in the way and we're going up and up and up. You can see that there are trees behind those trees. There's pine trees. There's like at least one, two, three, maybe three pine trees. And then off in the distance, it's kind of hard to see. You can see the towers on top of the uh, hill there. Mm -hmm. So you could see that, again, sand heat is accurate in, in telling me that this location is an online of site and there are multiple trees of the way. Here is just a quick uh, photo showing where the tower is in relation and a line through the trees. Next up. Eric, that, Eric that dead tree, is that one that you climbed at midnight and cut down? <laughs> it's, uh, sometimes uh, you need to use the CN, CN chainsaw. Yeah. It's a new product, works very well. <laughs> so for those of you that, that guessed the RSSI, you can see right here, negative 63. So I'm getting a negative 63. So again, even though the LIDAR data is from 2014, um, we're seeing pretty accurate results still uh, on the RSSI, the predictive RSSI. And then furthermore, if we do some link tests, we can see 118 meg down, 24 meg up for 143 megabits aggregate. So again, going what through channel size is that? So this is a 40 megahertz channel size right here. But I'm also going to show you. Uh, oh, this is the, an actual speed test on this over this. So not just the link test through the radio, but this is an actual speed test. I'm going to show you a 20 megahertz channel width here in a second. This is 20 megahertz right here. Receive power is at negative 64. Um, so you can see it's like a little worse. You have a little less EIRP with 20 megahertz. But again, hey, look, 108 Eric, megabits aggregate. Question uh, about sure. this sector. How many subscribers do you have on this sector? There are close to 60 subscribers on this AP. And are they all near non-line of sight or a mix or? It's a mix. It's a mix of near and non, but primarily their line of sight. Okay. And what, what plans are you able to sell off of that AP? So uh, we're, we're limited to the highest tier we can sell kind of based on the lowest common denominator of radio on our network. We have multiple uh, vendors we work with like Ubiquity. And so we try to provide a consistent tier. So the highest tier we provide is 40 megabits down and eight megabits up. But if we were able to deploy Greenfield, or if we were just using 450, um, then it would be much easier to deliver, you know, 50, 60, 75, even, even up to 100 megabit plans. So again, this is, this is like a 20 megahertz channel width here. Again, just a quick speed test. Here's one more slide. This is our 450M 3 gig AP with the highest number of SMs we have on our network. We have 98 SMs on this 450 running on a 40 meter channel width. And here are a few quick graphs that show that basically there's room to grow. You can see we still are not reaching 100% uh, single user MIMO. We're still not reaching 100% MUMIMO frame utilization. And we, you know, even, even close to 100 customers on this AP, there's still room to grow. Um, so that is it. Let me go so, ahead so Eric, and start. Just, go ahead. Quick, just a quick question. So, knowing what you know about the uplink starvation and LTE the near non-line of sight performance of LTE versus Cambium, because you've tested them. Um, would you be able to do this with a LTE platform? 
could you put 98 subscribers most you know with a mix of near non line of sight line of sight offering 45 by 8 packages could you do that um not with the lte that i have used no okay. 